Hi, and welcome to the 2018 Paper 2, the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level. We're on question 3 here. As usual, I suggest you pause the video and just have a go with the questions yourself. And if you want to set these notes I'm working off with the answers and details on the next page, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address is in the description below. So question 3 here is a kind of probability question. Uh, first part here, A, part 1 and 2 are marked together. So you get the if you get one part right, you'll generally get the seven marks for one correct answer. That's really good in a sense. So part one here says find the number of different arrangements that can be made using all the letters of the word rainbow. Each letter is used only once, so no replication. Now this is a section of probability number theory that um is very tricky, okay. But if you think about this, it's the least tricky option. If numbers can be used more than once, you have a um, like much larger, I suppose, answer. And the basic gist of how you can approach this is, if you're picking a way of arranging these seven letters, okay, in your first choice of a letter, you have seven choices. Now, this is basically saying pick a letter and a letter, and a letter, and a letter, basically seven times. And in probability, and means multiply. So it's seven times. Now, in your second choice, okay, you only have six options left, because you use one of those cho those choices, or, or those options. So times six, that's and another number. So it's, I'm going to, five times, whatever. I'm going to go straight to the answer here. So it's seven times six times five, each time less, you've one less choice of, of letter. Okay. So you end up with seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. That comes out as 5,040. Now, a different way of approaching that would be just, and I suppose the way you're, you go from the formula would be to find the you know, n factorial, which would be the number of letters, which is seven. So seven factorial. You have the same answer of 5,040. Okay. So it's one of those things, if you know it, you know it. If you don't, you don't. If you had tried here to put together three letters together, like even RAI, RAN, RAB, whatever, you'd have gotten the low partial three. Okay. Now, part two. This is very tricky, this one. Find the number of different three-letter arrangements that can be made using the letters of the word rainbow. Each letter is used at most once. Okay. Now, this is a classic permutation, okay, so using the NPR uh, scenario. And I've written kind of different here just for the way I can type it, okay. So this is one way of expressing the formula. Um, but basically, the way you're looking at it is there's seven letters. You have to pick three, or, yeah, pick three. Um, put it through the calculator, you get 210, okay. Um, some of these things, if you recognize this scenario, uh, there's certain words can be... You know, arrangement, select, can help you figure out that that's the permutation. This section, this permutation combinations, takes a lot of practice, like all of probability. And once you get good at it, it becomes very easy, until you get that level of, of understanding. And the only way to get that level of understanding is by practicing. So that's question 3A. Now question 3B here, okay, we have, um, now it's part 1 and 2 here are also marked together. This is a 15D. If you can get this table filled in correctly, you're going to get like the 11 marks. Now, the second part here is fairly tricky and you can you know, put people off. We'll go to the first bit here. A game called Rainbow uses an unbiased circular spinner. So it's not like you know, heavier on one side or whatever. So it's, it's, it, it, the probability should be as the angles are. The spinner has seven sectors colored red. Orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The table below shows the angle of each sector. It also shows the cash price that a player wins if the spinner stops in that sector. So you're shown here first of like 45 uh, degrees, it has a probability of 1 8, and you win 24. So you're basically looking here at trying to figure out where they got this uh, 1 8. Now, 
the angle of yellow here represents 45 degrees of the full circle. So they get this 18 by dividing 45 by 360, and you get 18. I can show that on a calculator. Um, so you get 45 divided by 360, you get 0.125. Now 18, 1 divided by 8 is 0.125. Same thing for the rest of them. So first from there, I'm dividing the 72 by 360 to get one fifth. The 30 divided by 360 gives one twelfth. The 90 divided by 360 is a quarter. 60 divided by 360 is one sixth. 18 divided by 360 is one twentieth. And 45 divided by 360 is one eighth. Okay. So that's the first part done. Now, uh, fairly well answered from the last one. Okay, from last year's exam that was. I marked paper two. Now the second part here, find the expected value. This is not something that I would be familiar with um, too much. Um, I don't teach limits of maths anymore. Um, I teach a different, in a sec, different sector. But the expected value can be found by multiplying the probability by the price. I've put an infographic here, kind of showing that. If you know what to do here, happy days, it's easy. If you know what expected value is, if you don't, there's no formula in the math tables for it. And this was fairly poorly answered. Um, people did all sorts of different things. Um, but in general, they had the table correct, so got the 11 marks. So in one sense, you know, it's not that big a deal, although we always like to pick up every mark we can. Um, now, the expected value can be found by multiplying the probability. So one-fifth by the prize, plus one-twelfth by its prize, plus one-eighth by its prize. So it's a fairly chunky calculation there. Calculate do it for you, okay, and it'll bring you straight to the answer of 31.5. Okay, that's that. So I would suggest, like all things of probability, on a regular basis, read the chapter, practice the questions. If you've practiced all the questions in the chapter of the book you have for maths, you should be able to do any probability question that comes up. It can be very handy for marks, so keep that in mind. Um, but again, it involves putting the work. So thank you and see you on question four.